So what we are going to do now is we are going to see what is VPC peering and how we can do it or when it is needed. So let us take a particular region like Virginia or Oregon or in any production deployments, you will have more than one VPC. Uh, it might be a VPC for dev environment, another VPC for prod, another VPC for uh, testing, or sometimes the VPCs are, are designed in a way that administrative team will have one VPC and production deployments will have one VPC and monitoring will have different VPC. But still all of them have to talk to each other. Uh, so that is when VPC cover uh, comes into picture, VPC pairing comes into picture and it allows you to communicate between uh, two VPCs. So here's a symbolic representation. So let us say this is VPC one, this is two and three. I have made sure that one and two can talk to each other and likewise uh, two and three to talk to each other. So if you want one and three to talk, then I will need one more pairing which will go like this and then um, it's by directional communication. So that is why I'm just put a two arrows there. So that is what VPC pairing will do that for you. So in a symbolic way, these are the steps that we need to do for a VPC connection to work. So I have given two subnet ranges and remember your subnet ranges or a VPC CID ranges cannot overlap. Here in this example, it is in 172 series. On the other side, it is on 10 series. If it is going to have overlapping series, obviously your routing table on uh, the VPC router will not know whether the traffic is inside or outside. Uh, so you, you cannot pair typically overlapping IP addresses. So that is one condition. Next is you go ahead and create a request from one VPC say, allow my traffic from uh, this orange security group or this subnet to the blue security group. So you go ahead and initiate the request and this request can be sent to your own VPC in your account or you can also do it with your partner VPC also. All you have to do is mention the account number to which you want to pair and then the VPC ID to which you want to pair. So once you send that request, mandatorily the requester has to be approved. The request has to be approved. Only when the request is approved, you can go ahead and configure your routing tables. And there is a default period. If I'm not wrong, it is seven days. If a request is not approved within seven days, it will automatically expire and a new request will have to be created. So step one is initiate and step two is accept the request and step three is going ahead and configuring your uh, routing tables on both the sides uh, saying that if I from 172, if I want to communicate it to 10 series, send it to this PCX interface. A new interface will be created called as the peering interface and all the traffic will be sent here. And likewise, in the other uh, server also, you can go ahead and create your uh, routing table. The other VPC also, you can create a routing table saying 172, send it to the PCX interface. The common use cases, as I spoke earlier, uh, it is for monitoring, logging, or remote administration, or scanning it uh, for security purpose. These are the common use cases. And until recently, as I said earlier, VPCs were working only the same region. If you're sitting in Virginia, you can pair only two VPCs within the same region. Uh, but this status quo was changed by Amazon after the uh, last reInvent conference or somewhere around that and they introduced something called inter-region VPC. So it is possible today that you can communicate uh, between Virginia and uh, Ireland and uh, three or four uh, regions they have introduced. It's not available in all the regions, but a few regions have inter-region VPC. Uh, but again, the specifics of how to configure it, how to set it up is all not clear but it is possible as on today at a certain level. So this is the demo we are going to do. We have set up, uh, we are going to set up two VPCs, start two instances, uh, let us say public only in this case, and we are going to see whether we can ping to each other or communicate uh, from one instance to another instance. So let us go to our VPC dashboard. So as I said, there are two VPCs. I'm going to name it as a pair one VPC having a 10.240 series of IP address and there is a peer 2 VPC that is going to give me 10.241 series of IP address and we are going to pair between these two VPCs now. So how do I do my pairing? And if I just look on the left hand side, there will be a pairing option. Here it is. And click on create pairing and we can go ahead and follow it through. But before doing the pairing, I want to start instances and try to ping each other and see whether we can communicate or instead of ping, let us say I want to do an SSH connection to see whether I can connect to the other server. So let us go ahead and start two instances now. So here I'm on the, going to start my first instance. I'm going to put it in my peer one VPC. I'm just going to put it in a public subnet. Let us go AC1 public. 
and then I need a public IP address. Yes, great. And why not? Let me have an IAM role also and pick some files. So what we can do is apart from just doing a curl, we can, I mean, apart from doing an SSH, we can also do a curl command if we have HTTP server and see whether we can retrieve these pages and see this IP address also. Click on storage, next, add tags, name, pair one server. I'm going to put it into the public security group. Review and launch, 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 launch. I'm going to launch another server which looks almost similar like this, but the only difference is it is going to sit into the peer 2 VPC now. So for that, I'm going to choose edit instance details, go ahead and select the peer 2 VPC, and I'm going to make sure it is going to sit in the public subnet. And I'm going to leave the other default details as it is. Next, yes, I want to change it to peer 2 VPC. Click on next, next. Here, I'm just going to name it as peer 2. Configure again, I'm going to put it into the public security group. Launch and launch. So let us go ahead and connect to our first server now. I'm just going to filter it by peer now. Select the first one and get the public IP address. And let us go ahead and connect to the server in SSH. If I do an SSH using the private IP address of that server, it will just hang there and it is not going to get connected. In a few minutes, it will get timed out. So let us go ahead and set up the peering and see if we can communicate to the server using SSH using the private IP address. We are in our uh, VPC dashboard and here is on the left hand side peering connections. Click on create peering and it's asking me what is the tag I want to give peer to VPCs and who is the requester. So I'm just going to carefully choose pairing one as the requester and automatically my IP address is uh, picked up and it is asking whether it is in my account or a different account. If I choose a different account, I'm going to uh, put in the account number here and the VPC ID here. If it is in my account, it will ask me to choose from the drop down list and I'm here going to choose VPC pair two here. And now all I have to do is click on create pair. And if I click on okay, Come on, refresh. And you can see here it says pending acceptance. So how do you accept it? Make sure that you are selecting the VPC which is request pending connection. Click on actions and click on accept request. So it's giving a summary and yes, I want to accept this pair. And it gives a nice little prompt here if you are not remembering that. Modify my route tables. Let us not do it here. Let us go to the routing table of those VPCs and do it. Click on close. And as of now, you can see here there are more routes, but let me go to our routing table and filter it for peer so we can focus on that one. And we need to do it on both the sides, peer one as well as peer two. So I'm just going to say, uh, choose the main route table, bring it up all the way, edit, and my any traffic destined for 10. 241.0.0 slash 23 slash 23 I need to put it into my PCX interface so my current VPC is in 10.240 series uh, my uh, target series is in 241 so all I have to do is click on save so I will have to do this on peer 2 as well go to peer 2 select the main route table click on edit and here you see here by default it is 10.241 series. So my new destination is 10.240.0 slash 0 slash 23. Send it to the PCX interface. Click on save. So I'm just going to take a pause and then send it, go back to my console now. And here you can see here the previous connection was timed out. Now I'm just going to try it again and see whether I'm getting a prompt. And of course it won't because if you remember the SSH connections are allowed only from my web security group and not from internet or any other IP address range also even if you do pairing. So you, I have to go to my security group and say that if the IP address series is coming from 10.240 and allow that. 
so that's what I'm going to do now the mistake I've made here is I've just attached it to the main route table but there are no subnets here so obviously this uh, route is not taking into effect so I'm just going to edit it to this guy copy this remove this guy here and there is uh, which one is having the public route uh, public subnets I'm just going to attach it to that one so this one is the internet gateway obviously this will have uh, uh, subnets for public as well great go to edit from my public if traffic is destined for the other VPC go ahead and send it to this interface likewise I want to do it on the other VPC also there also I have updated it in the main route table if you can see here I have updated in the row main that should not be done I should be doing it where my subnets are sitting so let me go ahead and select which one is having internet gateway this one is having internet go ahead and click on edit and add a route for 10.240 series PCX interface and click on save now we should be able to go ahead and connect this is the one come on let us do the last one successfully yeah there we go if I click on S it will not work so for people who are asking me how to copy the keys so this is how I'm going to copy the keys the one problem with the, if I'm going to do it publicly is I need to change the keys by creating new keys that's why I usually avoid it but for people who are not sure how to do it so this is how I do that press enter here oh, I selected it again bad so just come here paste it and control D control D again and it is saved now and you need to ensure that permissions are restrictive for keys so in Linux the restrictive permissions are something like 700 and T key so my key has been created so I'm just going to execute the previous SSH command that we did and we are going to tell that this is the key you are going to use and this is the user ID you are going to use to connect to the server and voila we are getting connected so that is how VPC pairing works we were in 10.240.0 server series and now we are in 10.241.0 server so we enable the PCX connection and it works if I go ahead and disable the routing or disable the pairing I will not be able to connect between these two instances now I hope that was clear if you have any questions I'm happy to answer them